So I'm excited to drop this word on your heart today. I'm excited for God to do what he wants to do over every one of you guys today. I truly believe that God has brought you here today, not because Pastor Cindy's preaching or Pastor Wilfredo or Pastor Ruben Del Pilar, but because God is here and he wants you to hear this word. I always say, I'm not gonna look to the neighbor, the person next to me and say, this word is for you. No, 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 this word is for you. And so you're here and God wants you to hear it. So I'm gonna take it back a little bit and we're gonna go back to the basics. Sometimes, this series is called get your, get your House in Order. And so I'm gonna take it back to the basics. Some, some of you guys may understand, some of you guys may not understand because I was raised in church all my life. So there's certain things that I know about about this passage that reminds me of my childhood Sunday schools, okay? But I'm gonna pray first before we start. Father God, I come before you and I just wanna thank you, Lord, for what you're doing today. I wanna thank you, Father God, for every person that is in this room, Lord Jesus. I ask right now, Father God, that you open up their hearts, their minds, and their ears to hear you today, Father God. I ask right now, Father, that you remove me and you use me as your vessel, Father, as I speak your word this morning. So with all this, Father God, I ask, Father, that you come and you dwell in this place. Let your atmosphere be so strong in this place, Father God, that nothing can come and disturb, Father, what you have for them. And in your mighty name, I pray, amen and amen. So Matthew 7, 24 to 27 says, and I'm gonna break them down as I go. And number 24 says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. 25, The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. 26, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. 27, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. So I don't know about you, but back in the day, and I can't sing, but back in the day, I used to go to Sunday school. And I also was a Sunday school teacher before my time. And we used to sing this song, the wise man built his house upon the rock. I'm not going to sing it. I'm just going to read it because you don't want to hear me singing. But the wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock and the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up. Come on, Chalada, you know this song. The rains came down and the floods came up. This is the passage. <laughs> that that song was connected to. And verse 24 says, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. So as I was reading this first little verse, I was like, man, there's only four verses. Gosh, I'm gonna get through this in like 10 minutes. We good, we're gonna go have lunch. We're gonna be awesome. But the Lord just kept dropping things on me. And he said, wait, slow down, Cindy. And he says, therefore, everyone who hears. And it took me to James 1.22 and it says, be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. And I was like, okay, what are you telling me, Lord? I like to talk to myself, yes. And the Lord just kept telling me, there is a difference between hearing and listening. But in this scripture, in this verse, he says, therefore, everyone who hears, hears these words, hears these words, come on, of mine and puts them into practice, is like a wise man. And I went to the NLT and it, in NLT it says, listens. And so it says there, there is a difference between hearing and listening to the word of God. We need to listen. Listen means I am taking it in. 
I'm not quick to go and respond to you because I'm just like, whatever, just hurry up, say what you got to say, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to respond back. No, no, no. I'm listening means I'm shutting my mouth, and I'm actually listening to what you're trying to tell me, and then I'm going to act on it. And I'm talking about the word. I'm not talking about a conversation with someone. I'm talking about me and God, about me and reading the word. I'm listening to what he's telling me. I'm not just hearing what he's saying. Because again, numerous people that I know will hear, but they'll never act. And sometimes we hear things and we just let it kind of pass by. Because first of all, we don't want to hear it. Some of us do not want to hear it. So I'm already thinking, what am I going to say back? But the Lord says, if you were to listen, hear the words of mine and put them into practice. Put them into practice means I'm going to act on it. I'm going to read his word. I'm going to listen to what he's telling me and I'm going to walk it out. And he's saying, just live it out. Stop all the talking and go down and do the, the, the thing that you maybe hate to do the most, and that's read his word. Some people don't like to read the word. I was, I was at um, one of our, um, I like to call her my daughter, but we were at their church, and she was talking about how do people say they love God but don't even read the word? That's like me saying, I love my husband, but don't have a relationship or communicate with him. We can't just say we love the Lord and never really read his word or listen to his word. Hear what he's trying to tell us while he's trying to take us into a place where we can better ourselves instead of falling into places and pits that we don't even belong. But that's because we decided we were just going to hear and then not do what he said. I'm going to do it because I know better. I've heard that numerous times. I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You know what I tell people that say, I know, I know, I know. I'm like, well, why are you asking me? Because you know everything. Why are you even asking? I don't know everything. I'm 50 years old and I don't know everything. And I'll probably be 89 years old sitting on my couch with my grandbabies running crazy in my house because I'm probably going to have more. And I will probably be like, Bobby, Mommy, I don't know everything. But you know what the Lord has told me? You know what the Bible has told me? That if I build my house upon the rock, no matter what storm comes my way, I'm going to stand firm. And I'm going to teach my babies that. I'm going to teach my grandbabies that. But that's off topic. For those who don't know, that is one, one of the reasons we have been and still are, um, oh wait, sorry, jumped the gun. Which, uh, but the foundation, the house the, the, it says, like a wise man who built his house on the rock, which is Jesus. I want to bring clarification for those that are brand new to the house and never been to church. The rock is Jesus. And what comes to mind is the property next door. So for many of you guys, you may not or you may know, but the property next door to the right of us, when you're driving in, that property belongs to CWC. That, mean, that means it belongs to all of us. Man, you guys should be happy about those things. I mean, okay, don't do it because I'm telling you to do it. I don't know about you, but when I buy something brand new, I'm excited and I want to share everything that I get. When I get me my, my new pair of earrings, I'm like, babe, what do you think about these earrings? I want to share it and share it and share it because I want somebody to be happy with me. But this is a church thing. We have, we have bought in that property next door. So we, as a church, should be excited. It ain't Pastor Cindy's and Pastor Rubens. It's the church's property. Come on. And since we bought that property, we've been using it as ministry homes and we are still, still raising money because some people think just because you see the work, the work has been completely paid. Well, let me, let, let me bust your bubble really quick. It's not completely paid. That's why we are raising money. There's one thing that we do do is we step out in faith and we believe. And you guess what? We have gotten people that have helped us throughout this process who have said, Pastor, when you're ready, you let me know. Pastor, we got you. When you're ready, let, don't worry, just let me know. Favor ain't fair for CWC Church. 
We may not got every dollar, but God sends the right people who are like, you know what? We're gonna help you to push this forward because we see what's happening and we see that it's needed. So what we did in this process is recently we have laid cement on the second half of the property, which is the front part of the property. And if you haven't been over there, I'm gonna encourage you to walk over and go take a look. I want you to walk through those little, that little gate. Grandpa's little place is in the back. We have one ADU that is waiting. We're waiting for someone to, you know, for the men's to come, men that maybe need a place to stay. We're looking for them to come and get that place. We have the women that are in the front that are staying there. These are ministry homes. What does that mean? That they have to participate in everything that we do here at CWC. It's not free, guys. But they get to participate in everything that we're doing here at CWC. And as that happens, they are being blessed. I I hope you understand. There's things that happen. You take a step of faith. God begins to bless not only the church, but he begins to bless those that are next door. Because I've heard nothing but things that like, hey, pastor, I just got a new job. And they are paying me like a whole lot of money. And I don't even know how that happened. I'm like, "I I just think it's God. Oh, I got a raise, God. I mended my, the whole thing with my parents. Me and my parents weren't getting along, and you don't understand, Pat. I wanted to get out of there. Man, I'm so glad that these doors opened. But we mended our relationship. God, this is what God is doing next door. But there are steps, and we're talking about foundation. We're talking about the rock. There are, st- there are steps that needed to take place for them to drop that cement next door. And I want you to hear me, but I want you to also listen to it in a spiritual manner where you're like, okay, that's spiritual. And there are steps that Diego had to take before he could lay that cement. And the first step was he had to go clean the ground. He had to go clean the ground. He had to go pull all the weeds He had to go clean them all, and there was a lot. And not only was there a lot, we had to get somebody else to come out and help pull all those weeds and trees and things that were out there. We had to pull the weeds and the grass and everything else that was there. Step two, they had to remove all the huge rocks. And they had to remove dirt, excess dirt that was there that was not needed. And Diego was, they were digging it up. There are things in our lives that the Lord needs to remove. There are rocks in our lives that God needs to remove. Number three was then they used this line level and string thing, which I have no clue because I'm not a contractor, to determine the slope of the ground. This matters. Because this prevents the water from being pushed away from the home. Because then if it doesn't go away from the home, it causes moisture, which ends up being mold. Which is very hazardous to your health. There are things in our lives that the Lord needs to come and throw the string so that it can determine the slope of our lives because there are things that are coming into our lives that are causing mold and it is not safe for you. I hope you're hearing me right now. There are things in our lives that we think are okay and they're not okay. There are things in our lives that we do on a daily basis because it's just normal, but your slope has been redirected. And every time the storms come, you get flooded and moisture begins. And let me tell you, mold doesn't just happen overnight. It takes time. It takes time, right? It takes a lot of time for the mold to come and build up. I remember I used to do property management for like 14 years. And I remember we, there was this lady, she had called us and she said, hey, um, just FYI, there's some mold in my bathroom, I think. I'm not sure. And I, they were like, Cindy, you need to go check. So I remember drove all the way to Hawthorne and I went into her bathroom. And automatically, because they give you courses on knowing what is hairy mold and what is regular mold and what can just be clean. 
cleaned up. So I began to go through this course, go through this course, walked into her property, and I remember I looked, and my, my face says everything. Gosh, I wish it didn't. But I was like, and I looked at her and I said, we're going to take care of it. And I remember I walked out of there, and the first thing I did was call the owner. I said, hey, we got a huge problem right now. A huge, huge problem because this lady has hairy mold growing in her bathroom. And not only that, she now told me that her new baby has been going back and forth to the hospital because the baby is having, can't breathe very well. And she's like, I don't know what's happening, but he's just been getting sick and I don't know this and that, but I don't know. I just wanted to tell you about the mold, had no clue. So the first thing I did was say, I'm going to remove you from the property. And she was like, what? I said, yeah, I'm going to remove you from the property for a little while. We're going to get some people to come in here and test the airs. And, you know, the little spurs that go in the air, those are the mold thing. And so they, she was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. I'll tell my husband. I was like, okay, cool. So then she leaves, and we go in there, and the guy's like, wow, this is bad. And I'm like, dang it, how am I going to tell her that it's not bad? Well, people aren't dumb. They start putting two and two together. And then she calls me and she says, I took my baby back to the doctor. And my baby, they said that that mold that is in my house is the reasoning why the baby keeps getting sick. And I'm sharing this with you because there are things in our own lives for the foundation that God has tried to create with us or has created and we've allowed for things to be sloped. There are things in our lives that we have said, God, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, but we continue to go the other direction instead. We continue to allow the sloping to take place and what has happened is it's now okay. Meaning, I don't know. I don't want to even say anything because I don't know. Whatever you're doing in your life that you know that you shouldn't be doing. There are things in our lives that we got to change the direction of our slope. Because moisture will build up. Bitterness will build up. Jealousy will build up. Envy will build up. Hatred will build up. There are things in our lives that we allow to build up. And I'm here to tell you today that you need to stop where you're at right now and ask yourself, am I sloping the wrong direction? Is my line going wrong? I remember just recently we had the, the rains and the lady called uh, her, her, her landlord and told her landlord, hey, the rain's dropping on my, it's coming to my side. So what do we do? We're it's on sabbatical, but we still be running. So we got here and we went to go look to see to make sure that, hey, did Diego do this right? He did do it right. It wasn't even going into her property. But if we are not careful, we can allow for things to go the wrong direction and all of a sudden we are now messed up. Now we're sick. Now we don't understand why we got migraines. Now we don't understand why we, our bodies always hurt. Now we don't understand why I'm talking the way I talk. Well, because you have allowed for the slope to go in the wrong direction. And God is here to tell you today that he wants to deal with your foundation. Number four says they lay rod iron pipes that they, and they also toss rocks because when they lay the concrete on top of the rod iron or the rocks, and I don't know what it does. Again, I'm not a contractor, I don't know, so don't quote me on this, but I think it kind of like, makes it firmer? Is that, is that even a word? It makes it firm? It makes it stronger? That when it dries, it's like even tougher? I don't know. But there are things in our lives that also God has to put back into us so that when they do lay the concrete, when God comes to lay the foundation on your life, you are stronger. I'll probably be corrected after this is all said and done on what the levels are or the steps are, but this is what I got last night. Because I wrote this whole thing. I got this a month ago and I went and I tweaked it. And the Lord told me, walk them through the steps of laying cement, of laying concrete, because it's spiritual. 
Some of us don't want for our foundation to be touched. We are okay with it being half whatever. We are okay with doing the sidebar where I don't have to, you know what, can you charge me cheaper if you do it like that? But then we end up paying consequences for those little things that we don't do correctly. Let me tell you, I can tell you, there are things that we pay, but they went and they lay, he, there's, 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 they went and laid rocks over there and it held the cement together. I know it did, because I, I saw it. Then they pour the concrete on the rocks and the pipes or whatever those right arm bars things are. That. And as they're throwing the concrete out of this machina, um, out of this machine thing, it's pouring. There's these guys that are down there and I wish I could be those guys. I'm such a tomboy, I swear. But I wanna be the one out there doing the cement like this because I love that stuff. Gosh, I'm just not that girly girl. But I wanna get dirty, right? My husband got lucky with me. Cause he can get the girly girl and he can get the rough neck. They will get out there and mow the lawn and do the cement and scrub the floors. But that's what the guys were doing. They were out there and they were like doing all that stuff. And I was like, gosh, I wanna be out there. But there's a reason why they're doing that. They're leveling it all out. Because if there's one thing I know, that man right there will know if it's not level. And I tell them, hey, you guys better make sure because grandpa, if he goes out there, he's gonna know there's a slope here. If we don't do the right steps, we will be all messed up. We will slope, we will do, maybe not lay rocks, maybe not dig the dirt out, maybe do these certain things. I know sometimes we try to pay half price for certain things, but again, I'm here to tell you that you will get a half price type of work. We hired this guy to do certain, something for us and let me tell you, we definitely got what we paid for. And I'm here to tell you right now that you need to take every step that the Lord is telling you today. If you need to clean out your foundation, clean it out. If there's weeds that are growing around it, pull them out. Whatever is happening, we are here today to fix the cracks that are in our foundation. Our foundation is literally everything. And when I talk about foundation, I'm talking about God. He has got to be your everything. Because on Him, if we stand on Him, our foundation cannot get cracked. It's only when we allow for those strong winds to come and try to rip us down that all of a sudden we see these type of things. Earthquakes come. There's shaking that happens. And I'm talking spiritual today. There are those things that come and try to shake up our foundation. I need you to stop and think about what is it that is breaking up my foundation? What is causing for the water to seep through those little cracks? There are things in our lives at times that we don't even recognize or we have ignored that there has been cracks in our foundation. Nobody is perfect, church. No marriage is perfect. But guess what? God can go and build on that foundation. I'm here to tell you that this time, and this is totally TMI, this whole time that we've been out, well, not the whole time, but about a week, right, babe? We were in a marriage counseling and it was the best thing I've ever done in my life. Swear. We were like, dude, let's do it. We have, we're on sabbatical, let's do it. They, they called us, they were telling us about it. I was like, yo, let's do it. Never knew what I was coming up against. Never knew the damage that had happened in my marriage. Never knew those cracks that had taken on because I was so immune to it. And I'm not saying we were all messed up. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand this. 
But there are things in my marriage and in my life, in my personal life, not his life, but my personal life that the Lord was saying, I got to put a little bit of cement in that crack. Because if I allow that to continue, that crack's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, moisture and more moisture and more. And all of a sudden, now I'm growing mold. And the Lord told me, go back and fix the foundation. I love it. I love that he loves me so much that he would say, Cindy, go do it. And that not only that I would do it, that through the process, I would be like, wow, God, you are real. God, you have been so good. I don't know if you guys remember, but we were up here on a Monday night for all of you folks that show up to a Monday night prayer. And I had said, we were talking about pastors, um, sermon series that he was doing. I can't remember what it was called, but, and it was talking about freedom and things of that nature. And I remember coming up here and I'm saying, I want to know what it's like to be free, but completely free, not free to where, oh, okay, that didn't hurt. I'm good, but I'm free. No, I want to know what it feels like to be really free. Well, guess what, church? I'm free and I'm really free. You know why? Because I went through the course, because I went through the steps and God came in and he filled in the gaps where all the gaps were. Some of us are just thinking that we're too, hey, I'm good, I'm good. No, none of us are good. There have been things in our lives that have caused cracks in our lives. There have been things in our past, in our childhood, that we have ignored, we have become immune to it. And we live day to day thinking it's okay. I raised my hand first because I know. Never did I ever, ever think, because I was tough. Ain't nobody gonna hurt me. That was all a facade. I'm good that I didn't get raised by my biological father. I'm good. My stepfather loved me. No, I wasn't good. Crack. There are th one thing after another. I was like, what? Are you serious? Are you sure you're talking about me? I am okay to say this because I'm free. God has freed me completely from hurts and pains and things that have happened when I was a child that I never would have guessed would have been affected me. But the thing that happens is that we allow for these slopes to happen in our lives, church. There are things that happen in our lives that we say, oh no, God, you, I'm good. Not me, Lord. Not me, Lord. I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not going to do that. I, I, I'm going to ignore that crack and I'm going to move over here. The Lord says, no, 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 because the winds are always going to come. The storms are always going to arise. Are you ready for the storm? Are you ready for the winds, church? Are you ready? Are you, do you got everything patched up around you? Because if you don't, I'm here to tell you that it's going to get worse. It is going to get worse. Many of times we say, mm, I'm good. And I wrote these things down and it says, and this is you saying, I believe you're real God, but you haven't showed up. That's a crack in your foundation. I believe, Lord, that you can heal me, but I'm still sick. But if you know the word, 
The Word says that by my stripes, He tells us, by my stripes, you are healed. Walk in your healing, church. Don't allow that crack to just continue to open up wider because doubt begins to happen. Doubt begins to play a huge role in our lives. Oh, I'll never get pregnant. What are you talking about? That's a crack. You need to patch that crack because my God can do anything. Oh, I'll never have. Oh, I'm never gonna be that one. Lord, you don't want me to be that business owner. Lord, why would you even want for me to be financially okay? Crack, that is a crack. God wants, he owns everything. Why wouldn't he want his kids to own everything? We have the mindset of thinking that we gotta be poor. I'm not a prosperity preacher, but I know that I began to walk out my life and say, I will not live paycheck to paycheck. And guess what happened? God began to open up doors, not because of me, because of Him. Because when you begin to administer what He gives you, He will begin to open up doors for you. But if you continue to say, oh no, no, not me, that is a crack in your life. That is a crack in your foundation. You need to check that crack. <laughs> you need to check it. Oh, why do people treat me so bad? Why do they talk about me? Why are they looking at me funny? Who cares? That's a crack. You don't realize that those little baby things can cause huge issues. If they talked about Jesus and they beat Jesus, who do you think you are? You're going to get talked about. They're going to want to mess with you. But guess what? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm going to fix that crack. Somebody say, check my foundation. Because if we don't check our foundation, it's just gonna constantly break apart. Anything can come up against us and we'll just let it. Anybody can come and preach to me and say one thing and I just all of a sudden go that route. Somebody can tell me you gotta believe this way and I just go that route. Go read your word for yourself. Get the revelation for yourself and let God speak to you and let God deal with you. Go listen to what he's trying to tell you so that you can fix your foundation because God wants you to have a strong foundation. He wants for when anything comes against you, for you to be ready, ready for anything. Verse 25 says, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Check my foundation, Lord. That's be our prayer, church. 26 and 27 says, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice, it is, is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. Some of you guys are just honestly just hearing me, which is okay. Some of you guys are actually listening to what I'm saying. And I'm here to tell you that for some of you that you are just hearing, I'm here to tell you that when the rains come and the winds come and the issue with your, your brother, your sister, your auntie, your job, that contract fails, some of you guys are gonna crash because some of us are so dependent on certain things that we allow it to break us. But the Lord is telling me today to tell you to check your foundation. So when those rains come, you aren't built on the sand, you're built on the rock. Because many of you guys know when they started calling out this hurricane, me and my husband were like, let's go have dinner. We went to go have dinner while there was a hurricane going on. <clears throat> 
and we were eating with, with some, some friends of ours. And there was a huge line over here in Torrance at the city of Torrance and they were all getting sandbags. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Don't misunderstand this. But I was like, I bendito, ain't nothing gonna happen. The rain's gonna come. And if it does and it comes, man, I would just wasn't ready. I should have been ready, right? But instead I was eating at a Cuban place. But the reality is if we build our house on sand, if we are not consistent on what we're doing and we build our house on sand, you will see that your house will fall. How many of you guys know those houses over up in Palos Verdes? My husband takes me for the drive all the time. That's me and, uh, me and his, his moment. We take this drive from San Pedro and we drive it all the way through Palos Verdes. But over there, and I can't remember what it's called, but the, 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 the ground was dropping, it was, it was, it was falling. Because, it, what is it? Portuguese bin, my honey takes me there. And the, the road, it was literally falling because there's no foundation. Because they built that road on, literally on dirt and sand. So every time a storm comes or anything else comes, it just starts to fall into, it starts cracking. Because I know one time we hit it really hard with my tires, I was like, mm, they better fix this, I'm gonna call the city. I'm just kidding. But the reality is some of us are building our house upon the sand, which is no good, and it's going to fall. You got to build your house upon the rock, which is Christ, which is his word, which he wants to talk to you. He wants to love you. He wants to cause for all of those things in your lives to be mended. He wants to sew you back up in areas that you thought would never, could never happen. There was one thing that the ladies began to tell me and I was like, how did you even know? I didn't even know that this was affecting me. And she told me by the end of these five days, Cindy, God is gonna mend you back together. And I just remember pouring out everything, not even knowing that I was going into this like this. I'm being really honest with you. I was going into this thing thinking, oh, we're good, we're gonna make this happen, we're gonna do our little baby, we're gonna say this and that and whatever. No way. She got me one-on-one. -on -one. I was like, shame on you, you're not supposed to do that to me. And she just began to open up. She said, Pastor, I need you just to open up and open up a little bit more. And I just began to share with her all kinds of things that have happened in my past. And I was like, God, I didn't think those things affected me anymore. And she says, by the end of this week, they're gonna be healed. Well, guess what, guys? She began to pray with me. And we're, all, we're doing all this through Zoom. And she began to pray with me and pray with me. And she said, Pastor, what do you see? And I said, oh, I'm literally in my office, sitting there on a Zoom like this. By the time we break, I'm like on the floor just weeping. Because I was like, God, how did I mask this for so long? How did I even function knowing that this hurts so bad? How, Lord? And the Lord began to show me because you just, this is you. You don't wanna, you don't wanna deal with it. You didn't wanna deal with every one of those cracks. You've ignored them for so, so long. And let me share with you, church, and this is big time TMI, but as she began to pray, she said, come on, I'm gonna pray with you. She began to pray over me and call out things in my life that she was like, no longer will exist in your life ever again. These areas will be mended. 
These cracks will be, there will be bandages put on there because they're going to heal. There's going to be cement that's going to be laid in this area. And maybe this one may be a little bit bigger. But don't you worry. You just keep calling it out because the Lord is going to begin to pack it. He's going to be begin to put things on it. And he's going to remove all of those things that you thought that would never be removed. Well, guess what? I'm sitting there. And she's praying over me. And she says, what do you see? And I said, I feel, I see a whole bunch of garbage in my belly. And she's like, okay. And she began to pray over me. And she says, those things that were done to you when you were little have got to go. Those things that were spoken over you have got to go. Those things that the people are saying over you have got to go. Those things that you've thought about yourself have got to go. All of those anger and whatever, and I'm naming all that. She's saying all these things, and I'm like, okay. And I'm, she's naming all these things, and I'm just like, okay, okay, okay. That's a lot. Stop saying it. And she's like, just say it. Just say it. And I began to say every one of those things. And there was a moment where I was like, God, breakthrough has got to happen. You have got to come and rescue me because I'm beginning to feel so overwhelmed. And she says, God is going to fill those cracks. And by the time I got up from there, she says, Pastor, what do you see? And I said, I see clear waters flowing in my belly. And she said, what? I said, yes. She jumped up off of her chair on the other end, all the way from Texas. And she said, praise God, because he's filling in the cracks. He's fixing your foundation. He's causing for those things that have hurt you for so long to be healed. He is calling you out, Cindy. And I was like, wow. So I can say that I am free. I am truly free. I am free to do whatever God wants me to do and I will not stop, church. I will not stop until everyone hears the word of God. I may not say it like you like it, but I say it like I like it. I wanna do it the way God told me to do it. I may not be this the theologian, cause I'm not. I am Pastor Cindy Del Pilar, who was born in Temple, Texas. I'm 50 years old and I'm married to that man and I will do what God told me to do. I will speak the way God told me to speak because he has repaired my foundation. He has put things back in order. He has healed my heart. He has called a river to flow in my belly. I don't know how you walked in here today. And I probably shared way too much, but I believe it was for every one of you guys. There was one thing I told my husband was, man, I can't wait to share this with our staff. Because I wasn't possessed, guys. Because some people go off the edge. But there were things that held me back. That they cause us to act out in certain ways. And God wants us to build our house upon the rock, upon his foundation. He wants us to acknowledge those things that have really been disturbing us. And he wants you to go back to him and allow him to repair your foundation. We are God's creation, church. We deserve this. We deserve for us to be able to go to our Father and say, Lord, my foundation is all messed up. It's sloping a little bit. I need you to, if you got to break it apart, put me back together. Lay the cement the way you want it to because I want to be the verse 24 where he built his house upon the rock. 
He was a wise man. I want to be a wise woman. The only way you become wise is reading the word of God. God has given instructions for everything. Everything, church. I encourage you today to ask the Lord to check your foundation because we need to get our house in order. And for us to get our house in order, it's not doing this and doing that, but it's starting from the beginning. It's starting to where it really matters because anybody can build anything upon this, but eventually things will tumble. Eventually cracks will begin to appear and appear and appear and get bigger and bigger. So I wanna encourage you, if you don't mind, just please stand. Just have a moment with God right now and just ask him, where are the cracks in my life, Lord, that you want me to repair? Show me those areas, Lord, that I need to stop ignoring. Show me what you have for me, Lord. Do you know that you cannot be all that God has called you to be until you repair your foundation? We can be certain things. We can go a certain distance, but it's until we actually fix our foundation is when God says, okay, now, now you're really ready. Now you're really ready for what I got for you. Now your business is gonna explode because what I got for you, you have fixed all of this so that when people come to encounter you, they're not just encountering Cindy, now they're encountering God in me. They're encountering the Lord that has healed my life, that has healed my soul, that has fixed cracks in my life that nobody else could have fixed.